Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the training and skills you need to get a new career? Call Center for Training and Careers today. That's CTC at 408-213-0961 and start building your new career today. Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador Laveau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Well, we all know that laughter is the best medicine, right? Well, coming up is the seventh annual Comedy Jam put on by the Indian Health Center, Santa Clara County. And to tell us about it, we have with us Vernon Medicine Cloud, and you're on the staff there at the Indian Health Center. Yes, I am. And we also have Craig Pasqua, and you're on the board at the Indian Health Center. Yes. Welcome to both of you. So we have a big show coming up. Definitely. Tell Thank us about you. it. It's our seventh annual fundraiser comedy jam. We've had an exciting six years, and this year we're going to have Jason Love, who's uh, out of Bakersfield, a really great comedian. Dean Hagelin's back by popular demand. He's always very funny, and we have a local Jeff Applebaum. Always oh, great to great. have Jeff back. And I've been to them, and they're really funny. They are. I mean, they're just really good entertainment. Now, it's to benefit the health center or a particular program, or what? yes, actually, it's to uh, this year we designated the funds that we've raised to go to our youth program. Okay, and what does the youth program do? Well, they do a lot of cultural activities, uh, drumming, uh, dancing. Uh, life skills. Uh, life mm -hmm. And development, education. And I know uh, there's always been like a lot of fundraising for the youth programs right. because they're not normally included in federal programs. And is that the reason? Or? Right, exactly. So we raise additional funds uh -huh. to meet program needs and things of that nature. There's a, there's a huge need for um, the, the, our youth to receive the services that they need. Okay. And the, the uh, comedy show, it's seventh annual, wow. Yep. Oh, time flies. It huh? does, it <laughs> does. <laughs> but it seems like you have a bigger crowd every year. We and do. And it's just, it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. Now it's gonna be where this year? At the Campbell Community Center, the Heritage Theater. We're gonna have a reception before the show. Okay. And it's, uh, you know, it's um, open to anybody, of course, mm -hmm. but a reception before the show and then the comedy jam to follow. So really good lineup and it's a really nice venue. Oh, great. And that's located where in Campbell? Or? It's Campbell. It's off Winchester and Campbell it's off Avenue. Campbell Avenue. Okay. And it's the one they kind of redid or something? Yes. The theater? Yes. Oh, that'll be nice. It is. Yep. The orchestra level can seat 600, balcony 800. Wow. Really nice acoustics and setup, and it's very nice, very professional. Oh, that's exciting. It and is. when is it again? Saturday, October 19th. And starts at? The reception will start at 5 and the show will start at 7. Now, can people get tickets online? Should they get them at the Health Center or how do they go about that? They can do a few things. They could either come to the Health Center in person or they can call us. We can mail them tickets, but they can also buy the tickets at the Campbell Community Center uh, Heritage Box Office. Oh, okay. Well, that's really wonderful. I can't really wait. I can't wait. And if you go to the Indian Health Center's website, there'll be, okay. we'll have a link there to the Campbell Community Center. Right. Now, for our audience that isn't familiar with the Indian Health Center, tell us a little bit about it. Well, sure. The Indian Health Center has been around since 1976. Um, it serves everyone. It is a federally qualified health care center as well as an um, um, in urban Indian center. When the center was formed, it was formed largely because the United States government policy, which relocated Indians mm -hmm. and they designated some large urban areas and one of the urban areas was San Jose. And so when the Indians came here, um, they typically came from reservations, they found themselves lacking in services. And of course one of the services that they had received on reservations was health care. And so the early leaders of the agency got together and formed uh, an Indian clinic. Mm -hmm. and. Um, 
It was primarily for the relocated Indians. Through the years though, uh, we've become a federally qualified health care center. We've opened our doors to everyone and everyone is welcome now. Now you're low, the main office is on Meridian, but you've kind of spread out now, right? You're on Santa Clara Street, you're on Evergreen. <laughs> Tell us about your new locations. So we have a few locations. Our, we are headquartered at 1333 Meridian Avenue. Mm -hmm. We have our finance and business office at 1211 Meridian Avenue. We also have our WIC right around the corner on Westwood Avenue. We also have our Silver Creek site, which is on 101 Capital Expressway on the east side. Very convenient mm -hmm. That's for That's relatively new, isn't it, it? It is, yes. Just within the last year, we've opened that site okay. up. It's been yeah. a big success. And then we also took over O'Connor Hospital's Family Medicine mm -hmm. Clinic. So that's new for us as well in the last year. Oh, I wasn't even aware of that. Yeah, one. definitely. Yes. Yes. Oh, so we're okay. growing. We're we're growing. Yes, healthcare are. with the right. healthcare reform coming through uh, January of next year, yeah. we're probably gonna have to open up a few more sites because demand for healthcare services will will rise. That's true. So that's it's true. exciting for us. And uh, on 13th Street, you have a lot of activities, I understand, right? We do. Community at our wellness activities? center. Yes, uh -huh. we do. At our wellness center, we have our counseling department there as well as our community wellness and outreach. We have various events that we do there. Our elders luncheon is hosted there the first Friday of the month. We have a gym at our wellness center. We have our diabetes prevention program. Just a whole wide range of services that we offer to the community. Now, obviously, diabetes is a big issue in the Native community. Tell me about services you have for... Well, we have a, uh, our award-winning diabetes prevention program, which has been recently um, in the news. It was, it received an award from, I, I um, sorry, I just got the email. <laughs> <laughs> I, the name of the agency that gave us the award escapes us, but they have been, a, they've received numerous awards in the past. Um, as a matter of fact, um, we just applied for a um, uh, community medical services grant uh, spotlighting our diabetes prevention program and it's we are trying to show how we can in these days of rising health care costs use the diabetes prevention program model to lower the cost to the United oh, States government yes. so we applied for an innovation grant for the uh, the CMS department which is in the United with the US government to um, hopefully spur some interest and mm -hmm. show how we, using our model, they can lower the price of, of giving care. Well, good luck on that and congratulations Definitely. on the award. I know uh, a lot of people have been into the walking and the fitness and right. the health oh, to yeah. address the diabetes issue. Yeah. And okay, so what services do you do for youth? You said that the uh, funds from the Comedy Jam were gonna go towards youth programs. So mm -hmm. what, what do you have for youth? Well, they can go to the a, a youth gona somewhere that they have in California. Which so, is? the youth gona is a gathering of Native Americans, and they talk about life skills. And there's uh, uh, public speakers and elders telling stories and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. We they basically use the funds to go to places um, where field there's trips kind field of trips type of that. stuff, exactly, or to bring a guest speaker in, or to do something. Um, it could be science related, math related, mm -hmm. things like that of that nature. It's a really good program. They got uh, programming going on every Thursday night. They also we also offer transportation to pick up youth, so that's always a good thing. From our uh, van driver picks them up and drops them off after the you know session is over. Yeah, it uh, goes from about six to eight o'clock every Thursday, and they do dancing, drumming, singing, all that. Good so if there's some native students watching the mm -hmm. show and they haven't participated in the past, they can yes. what, go on the website or give a call? Or Definitely, yes. They can go on our website, the IndianHealthCenter.org. They can give us a call, call our, call our youth prevention department, um, and they can get connected with us that way. We also have a family, our family resource center with First Five. That's also a great resource for families. And what does that do? That, <coughs> excuse me. Excuse me. That is for children zero to five, okay. and they get. Um, it's like a learning program where the first five years of a child's life is where they pick up habits and mm -hmm. values and morals and that type of um, learning from the parents and things. So we have that, and it's a really been a great huge resource. And then uh, we have other resources to the family too, if they're need of housing, jobs, that type of thing. There, we're there for that. 
that's wonderful. Definitely. I know you refer him to CTC, right? <laughs> of course, of course, and training. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, Saturday, October 19th, it's the seventh annual comedy jam fundraiser. Yes located in Campbell, Campbell Community Theater. Yes. And again, the comedians you're having, and give me a little history on each one. Sure, Dean Hagland, he is actually a, uh, t a TV star from the hit oh. TV series Fox, um, The X-Files. He was Langley, he was the dorky uh, oh, okay. white guy that wore yeah. the glasses and the blonde hair. He was with the three different conspiracy theorist guys. <laughs> really funny, really funny guy. The other guy is a local gentleman, Jeff Applebaum. He was also in the pursuit of happiness with Will Smith. He had a small cameo appearance. Experience. Great, great comedian though, very funny. And then we also have Jason Love, who's up and coming from Last Comic Standing. He's out of the Bakersfield area. Very funny as well. Oh, good. We're looking forward to it. And uh, if any of you want tickets, you know, call the go online, get yes. them from the Indian Health Center, or go by there. Or we we do have a comedy jam um, okay. website. Oh, it's you do. Get www.ihccomedyjam.com. Okay. We also have sponsorships available if that's, uh, if anybody would like to be a sponsor as well. Oh, so we're looking for sponsors. Yep. Keep that in mind. Or groups. Yes. Group sales if somebody wants Definitely. to take a whole group or take their whole family exactly. or take their extended family, their neighbors. Their there you go. <laughs> it's always good, clean fun. We, it we is. Do, yeah. It is. I've noticed that. Good. Yeah, because I've been to some comedy shows. I'm like, <laughs> 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 but no, yours is really good. I, I really enjoy it all the Great. time. Great. So thank you both for coming on the show, and we look forward to going to the Comedy Jam. Don't forget we're on Facebook. We'll have pictures on Facebook. We'll be advertising the Comedy <laughs> Jam on Facebook, and like us too. So um, coming up, we have Samson Wolf. He's going to be talking a little bit about Leonard Peltier, updating us. He comes on periodically to let us know what's going on with the Peltier case. So uh, look forward to talking to Samson. We have with us Samson Wolf. Samson is with the Leonard Peltier Support Group of Northern California. Welcome, Samson. Hi, thank you for having me here. It's been a while, and I'd like to know what's going on with Leonard Peltier with his case, but if you could start off with giving our audience a little background about uh, Leonard. Yeah, Leonard uh, Peltier is a uh, member of the American Indian Movement, and uh, back in the uh, uh, like in the 60s and the early 70s, there was a lot of um, civil rights movements going on and there's a lot of uh, uh, treaty violations with the Native Americans and and specifically in South Dakota there was a lot of murders that were going on and they had asked some of the American Indian Movement members to come out and help defend some of the traditional elders that were getting killed and Leonard's one of those people that answered that call to go out to help out and during that time um, there was a uh, a lot of FBI in there, there's um, a lot of uh, murders going on and nobody was helping them resolve these murders. And, and so they went out there, set up camp. At that time you can protest with your guns, rifles. A lot of uh, natives were ex-Vietnam uh, vets who went out mm -hmm. to help out. And uh, so they had set up a camp at the Jumping Bull Ranch and this, uh, there was a shootout there. This uh, couple of unmarked cars came on, on the, um, onto the private property, the Jumping Bull Ranch on, on Pine Ridge, and um, uh, these guys got out and there was a shootout exchange between the members of the American Indian Movement and these two FBI agents, and at the time they didn't know they were FBI agents, and uh, so, and they got killed, you know, but they didn't know that they were FBI, and they, at the time there was a lot of uh, racism towards Native Americans, mm -hmm. so there was people, there was a lot of um, uh, racial tension and, and, and hatred. Um, and so anyway, they, they didn't know who these guys were. They thought there could have been another uh, could, couple of racist white them. guys that wanted to come and kill some Indians. And, uh, and they did, they killed them. Yeah, they killed uh, uh, Joe uh, Kills Right Stunts. And to this day, nobody's uh, ever paid for that murder that the FBI, they killed him. And uh, the FBI didn't have to pay for his murder. Mm -hmm. And yet, um, when, when this was um, shootout ended, they were basically looking for three guys, Bob Robidoux, Dino Butler, and Leonard Peltier, who they considered leaders of the American Indian Movement. And uh, so they caught Dino and Bob and they went to trial and they were acquitted on the grounds of self-defense. So um, to this day, if, Le if Leonard would have been caught with 
uh, went to trial with them, he'd be a free man today. Because the jury acquitted him on the grounds of self-defense and said, why are you FBI's there? Why didn't you announce who you were? These, you know, if you come in mm -hmm. shooting at somebody's property, you have a right to defend yourself. You know, so they, you know, they were acquitted. So if Leonard could have been with them, he'd be a free man today. But he's still been in prison, you know, for these uh, 36, it's seven the wrong years. Wrong place at the wrong time, right? Yeah, yeah. And but he fled. He didn't feel that he would get a fair trial, so he fled mm -hmm. to Canada. And um, you know, when the FBI lost the case against uh, Bob and, and Dino, uh, it just infuriated them. And so they decided they're going to put all their efforts they can and, and and put the full weight of the law against Leonard Peltier. And so. By doing that, they've uh, they they lied uh, to the Canadian government to illegally extradite him back here. They uh, uh, forced some uh, witnesses to lie uh, and sign, falsify him. affidavits by threatening him with their lives. And there's a really good mov movie right now that you can watch if you go to um, the Who Is Leonard Peltier info website, and it's called Incident at Oglala, and it was produced by Robert Redford. And you can. Uh, Watch it for free now if you go to the website, and oh. it'll go into a lot more detail than the time that we have here. It's a 90-minute movie. It's uh, well produced, and you can um, see what was going on. You can get more of a feel of the the type of racial tension that was going on mm -hmm. on the reservation and this uh, climate of violence that was happening. Um, and that's the reason why Leonard was out there to help these people. And so when Leonard got extradited illegally back to the United States, you know they had. Uh, uh, a, a jury, you know, it should be when you go to court, a jury of your peers. And Leonard didn't have a jury of his peers. He had a jury of, uh, um, basically it was all white people that in, in an area where there was race, racial mm. hatred towards Native Americans. So how was he going to get a fair trial? Especially when the evidence that could have allowed his freedom, this uh, judge wouldn't allow this evidence into his trial. Uh, they basically uh, they railroaded him into uh, uh, prison and to pay for you know the prosecuting attorney said we don't know who killed these FBI agents but somebody has to pay and Leonard's been paying for all of these years and it just you know how it, many years now? Geez, it's going on uh, approaching 40 years. I think it's going to be like his 37th year, 38th year now, and um, he's getting old. His health isn't all that all that well. And he's moved around from a couple of uh, federal prisons. You know, he was in Leavenworth for many years, and then when the prison that prison started getting a little run down, they, you know, in America we they built a lot more prisons, and there's a large number of uh, we have the largest population of prisoners in the United States in, in any country in the world, and they and they're building more, and they're trying to it's uh, it's run it's uh, it's not run by the state, it's run by private. Uh, organizations now who are, uh, make a profit off of the prison system, and it's costing the taxpayers still a lot of money because they uh, to house these uh, prisoners. So there is a a, a move to uh, urge um, Eric Holder um, to um, uh, release some of the elder prisoners to that are like they're not violent and they can serve the rest of their time at home. Uh, like you know, with the ankle breast bracelet on house arrest, mm -hmm. and so they've been doing this for some states. I think South Carolina does it now. And there's, a, if you go to the who is Leonard Peltier dot info website, uh, there's some uh, petitions you can sign on there. There's um, a lot of information you can find out about the Leonard Peltier case. And but basically to get Eric Holder to uh, applaud him for his efforts into releasing some of these elder prisoners. Which Leonard is one of these that could be, you know, he's not a, a, a threat to society. He just would like to spend those older years and, you know, with his family. He's got grandchildren, and he'd like to be be home. I mean, really. I mean, there's uh, people that have, uh, um, if if this case would happen now, I think a good attorney would just get it thrown out right. because of the evidence is just falsified. Uh, there's there's more li liberal. Um, uh, Supreme Court justices now, and it's not as the racial tension isn't as bad as it was back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I really wish that they would consider that in, uh, in Leonard's case so that he can have some time off in his elder years um, instead of just sitting out. You know, they moved him around from uh, Leavenworth. He went to Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, and now he's down in Coleman, Florida, which is really hot. 
uh, weather down there, and it's it's a burden for his family to come to see him. You know, it was it was still a burden for them to come why to see do, him. Why did they move his, him so much? Um, basically, because of the just to make him miserable, or what? Well, <laughs> it's <laughs> well, you know, it seems like uh, they were moving him around just to, for an opportunity for somebody to take him out. And oh. when he was in uh, Lewisburg, he did get jumped and beat up pretty bad, and uh, somebody trying to make a name for themselves, and some younger uh, inmates that beat him up. And so they put him back into, um, you know, some protective custody, and then they put him down, and sent him to Coleman, Florida, and put him in the hole there for a long time, uh, for like a month. For, yeah, you know, he has diabetes, so he's had some health issues, and um, he's not getting the proper medicine down there, and uh, and it's hot, and he got um, like some one of his. Uh, Somebody disconnected a, a wire in the lot, you know, from a light, and I guess when they searched his his jail cell, one of the guards got shocked. So they tried to say that it was <laughs> Leonard Peltier assaulted them, and you oh know, um, it was just you know the guys you shouldn't be touching loose wires. Loose wires you know, most so people have yeah. common sense. As a little kid, don't touch those wires. But anyway, that they kind of held that against Leonard, oh and so now he's goodness. just. Uh, wants to go home. And wow. he has said recently that uh, he don't believe President Obama is going gonna, is gonna to help him. So there's got to be another avenue that we can help this, uh, this warrior for the people who stood up for indigenous rights, who's just standing up for you know, injustice against Native Americans and stealing land and violating treaties. And, and he's done so much good for the people even being in prison. Um, one of my uh, niece's father, I guess when he was in Kansas, mm -hmm. was a guard, and he said he was one of the nicest people to know, Leonard yeah. Peltier. And, and I know he's done all these toy drives and everything else. He's done a lot of good things, even though he's in prison. And I mean, to he's be He's been that nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been uh, a candidate for the presidency, and he's actually got a lot of votes from people. And he's, uh, yeah, he fosters uh, parents for some uh, children in South America, and he's written several books. Yes, and, and uh, he's an artist. And he's a he's a really awesome artist, mm -hmm. and I, I, he did this shirt here. Uh, it's a you beautiful can, shirt. You can um, buy a lot of uh, by going to the Who Is Leonard Pelter info website. You can actually see some of his artwork and right. buy some of it. And there's also support uh, supplies you can buy, like T-shirts and bumper stickers and. Um, and his, uh, you know, he's been in pr prison for so long that there's uh, this defense committee has changed throughout the years, and you know, um, is, you know how it is with any organization. People, there's always inner turmoil and people mm -hmm. struggle in a fight. But if there's anything that the uh, American Indian Movement has taught us is that that COINTEL pro program, that the counterintelligence program that the FBI used to infiltrate and disrupt um, uh, people from getting organized, you uh -huh. know, is that we shouldn't fight against each other. And that's right. one of the things Leonard urges us, that we all get along together. So now there's some other people that are coming back and into the defense committee that are helping out. And uh, a lot of people are coming back to help. So, you know, we just want to urge people to join uh, a local uh, Leonard Pelter support group or maybe write some, go on to visit the website and write some letters of support. Or just write Leonard directly, and mm -hmm. you know maybe you can go to the website and watch that movie Incident at Oglala, and then there's uh, his Leonard's address is right there on the front page of the website, and you can write Leonard a letter and you know maybe give him some words of encouragement, and maybe we can uh, have a, a, another uh, letter writing campaign campaign that's going on. And you can join that through Amnesty International, uh -huh. and um, they also have a huge. Uh, a campaign going on right now to help Leonard Peltier. Now there's a lot of support groups throughout the country and one of the things you do is go to uh, powwows and have mm -hmm. a table. I know Donna's done that and uh, you ask for donations there. You sell a lot of his uh, t-shirts and have the petitions there? Sure. Uh, we try and educate the public because mm -hmm. there's a lot of younger generations that are, aren't aware of what happened with you know who Leonard Peltier is and uh, of the American Indian Movement, and there is a local uh, American Indian Movement West chapter up in San Francisco, um, and they have their uh, American Indian Movement West website that you can go to, which also has a lot of um, things that you can do to help uh, indigenous rights and help mm -hmm. sacred sites, and uh, or or just come and hear some some drumming, you know, uh, to some of the events because there's 
always some really wonderful dancers and singers and a lot of them come out in their regalia and yeah. uh, there's flute players. I mean, it's it's really a positive thing, and the American Indian movement is open for all people. It's not just for Indian people. We can't. Leonard can't get free with just the help from the Indian people. He needs help from all people from all corners of and this world. He needs world. people to tell Obama to. Yeah, Obama needs to step up. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's a National uh, Congress of American Indians was helped form to work with Obama on on a lot of Native American issues, and they have a resolution to help uh, Leonard Peltier. So uh, I'm hoping Obama will listen to the National Congress of American Indians because there's uh, over 500 tribes that are all part of this who are urged, you know, 500 tribes that are requesting Leonard Peltier to be right. freed. Thank you for being here, Samson, and updating us, and we'll keep helping however we can. If you can go on the website, sign a petition, write him a letter, buy something to help support his case, and uh, we'll do what we can. Yeah. Free Leonard Peltier. Free Leonard Peltier. <laughs> Don't for about, forget about the Indian Health Center's Comedy Jam. We'll see you there. We'll see you next week. <laughs>